It's a fine day here on the Dava Moor and I hope you'll join me and my colleague, this government dragoon soldier, as we follow the route and the events that led to the Battle of the Hawks of Cromdell on the 1st of May 1690. He's already had seen some action. He's had his arm chopped off here, he's lost his nose, so I think we'll leave him behind as we follow the route over the Dava Moor. The two opposing armies were the Jacobites, who were followers of Catholic King James II or VII, who'd been deposed and gone into exile in Ireland, and Protestant William of Orange, who became William III. The Jacobites had risen in 1689 and had success at the Battle of Killiecrankie under Bonnie Dundee, but lost subsequently at the Battle of Dunkeld. In the spring of 1690, they decided to resurrect the campaign. The Jacobite army had gathered first in Kepach, and marched to Coolnacaile near Nethy Bridge under the command of Major General Buchan. Their initial numbers had been around 1,200, but due to desertion, they had dwindled to about 800. The commander of the government army was Sir Thomas Livingston, garrison commander at Inverness, who, with about 1,200 men, mostly dragoons and highlanders of clans Grant and Mackay, marched from Inverness to Brodie and then on towards the Dava, where he had heard of the presence of the Jacobite army. So we crossed over the watershed from the Dava Moor into the braes of Castle Grant behind me. To my right is the farm of the Raid, which is mentioned in the accounts preceding the battle. And it's from here that the government army winded its way through the, the glen, through the forestry, down towards the Spey. Behind me in the distance are the Cromdell Hills, and directly in line is the village of Cromdell and the site of the battle. So on the early hours of the 1st of May 1690, uh, the government army possibly were able to see the campfires of the Jacobite army camped out on the Hawks of Cromdell in the distance. And that was our target. And the general discussed with his captains whether they should proceed or hold fast here until daylight. His captains and other officers decided that they should press on and with the aid of Grant scouts who lived locally and knew the land well, they descended down towards the River Spey. So I've now descended from the raid, and behind me is Uchtebeg, uh, Lag, and Achnaro Beck. And again, the government army descended through this area down towards Castle Grant. The Laird of Grant was a loyal King William supporter and was most displeased at the presence of a Jacobite army on his land. A Grant captain closed the gates to prevent anybody from the castle alerting the Jacobite army of the government's presence. You can maybe tell by the curlews and oyster catches flowing overhead that I'm now down on the banks of the River Spey. The area behind me is known as Garva Moor, or the large rough ford. And this is the main area where the government troops and dragoons crossed over on their approach to the Hawks of Cromdell. It's ideally situated, it's down in this uh, depression, it's screened by the trees so any Jacobite troops on the higher ground can't actually see it. The hill on the opposite side is uh, Tom Anurd, and it was in the uh, flanks of this hill that the McDonald's of Kepach were camped slightly apart from the main Jacobite body. Now it would be amiss, you'd have thought, if the Jacobites hadn't put pickets to guard the fords crossing the River Spey. And of course they had put one here. They put two or three. And the reason that the government troops were so easily able to cross here is that they put a division, di diversionary tactic by putting a smaller group of troops further upstream, which we're going to visit shortly, opposite the ford at Cromdell Church. Now the confusion that was arisen there possibly took the pickets that were guarding here upstream to help their friends and so opened the passage here for the dragoons to cross over. So we're now going to walk upstream a little bit towards Cromdell Kirk and look at the other crossing point over the River Spey. <laughs> I'm now beside the Aldenich, which rises on the edge of the Dava Moor and flows down past Huntley's Cave 
and through the ravine bounded by the Coyle Nautic Woods. It then enters the River Spey, just above the foundations of the old Cromdell Bridge. Now this is the route that the minor body of government troops took down through the woods, shielded from sight, until they were right opposite Cromdell Kirk, where they um, raised a diversionary tactic for the main body down at the Garva Moor. Jacobite officers at Cromdell Kirk were a Captain Brodie and a Captain Grant of Invermorston. They raised the alarm to warn their colleagues in the Hawk by ringing the church bell. By three in the morning, the government soldiers had forded the spey and from Dalhapel advanced on the Hawks of Cromdell, where the Jacobite forces were in total disarray. The Jacobites, consisting mainly of Macdonalds, Macleans, Grants of Invermorston and Macphersons, scattered, with the Macdonalds heading towards Tominoord and the others up over the Cromdell Hills into the descending mist, while a few took refuge in Lethendry Castle. About 60 Jacobite men and officers, under the command of Captain Buchan, the general's nephew, put up a stiff resistance here. Livingston offered them surrender, but they retaliated by killing two of his grenadiers. Eventually, following the throwing of grenades, they surrendered. I've now walked up from Lethendry Castle to the top of Lethendry Hill, which gives great panoramic views of the surrounding area. And from the top here, we can see many of the places that we've passed through on our journey to the Hoss of Cromdell from the Dava Moor. From here, we're overlooking Balmenich Distillery and Grand Town, and then swinging round, we can see Castle Grant, the River Spey, Cromdell, Cromdell Church, and out over towards Tom and Ord, looking out over the battlefield and Lethendry Castle below. About 400 of the Jacobites were killed and 100 taken prisoner, with only a handful of government troops being killed. The Macdonalds continued to put up a fight on the moor of Greenish near Avi Moor and even tried to take Loch Eilan Castle in Rothy Marcus. I've crossed over the Cromdell Hills and I'm now not far from Tom and Tull beside the River Anne, and next to me is a standing stone with the date 1690. By oral tradition, it marks a spot for one of the Highlanders who fled through the mist after the Battle of the Hawks, finally succumbed to his wounds and died near this spot. It's for King James, who was finally defeated at the Battle of the Boyne in Ireland and fled to France, and so ended the first Jacobite uprising. Well, this is journey's end. I'm leaning against what's known as the Piper Stone. Allegedly, two Pipers played their pipes here to rally the Jacobite army as they fled behind me over the hawks and up over the Condal Hills into the mist. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed making it. It's been a long trek from the horizon behind me to here at the Piper Stone. Um, I didn't do it all in a one but uh, yeah, it's been good fun uh, making it and it's been fantastic weather. So I hope on the 1st of May you remember the people that fought here and the events that brought them to this particular place and I hope you'll join me as uh, I go on another walk somewhere in the Grantown area. Thanks very much for watching.